Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And in today's video, I have a slightly unpopular opinion that I wanted to share with you. Um, and I know that in the past I have made comments before on wanting to make videos on wickless testing and I've just never done it. And I think it's because something in the back of my head just, I don't really recommend it, nor do I use this kind of testing method anymore. And that is what I wanted to share in today's video. So if you're brand new to candle making, or if you're just not too sure what I mean by wickless testing, essentially it's a testing method of candle making when you pour a candle without an attached wick at the bottom of the jar. So it's completely smooth with no wick um, poking through the middle of it. And then what you do is you insert a little hole, typically with like a toothpick or something, and then you actually put a wick down into the center, trim it to the desired length, which is about a quarter of an inch, and then light it and test it. And the theory behind this is that it saves material and it makes it quicker and easier to find the correct wick, because if you find that the wick is not working initially that you are testing with, you can just easily pull it out and then replace it with a new wick. Typically how that works is you would take out the old wick that's not working, replace it with a new wick, use a heat gun to smooth it down, and then it's good as new, you trim it and then you keep going on with the testing process. So now that you know what wickless testing is, now I can kind of explain why I personally do not use that testing method anymore. And after the last few years of making candles, what I have learned is that the starting fill weight on a candle makes a difference in the performance of the candle all the way down. So what I mean by that is I am currently uh, back to testing these nine ounce straight sided jars and it is filled up to about right here. So let's say I wanted to test maybe four or five different wicks within this jar. The first one doesn't work, I take it out, it's too small. Second one doesn't work, I take it out, it's too small. And even if you were smoothing down the surface and not leaving that kind of little, um, that little melt pool where it looks like it's starting to tunnel, even if you were smoothing it out, it's going to slowly go down throughout the burn sessions. So if the fill weight right now is right up here, by maybe like the fourth wick, it might be right down here. And that quarter of an inch or whatever it is, it may not seem like it's that big of a difference, but if you're trying to get the most accurate results when it comes to your testing method, I just think that it's not going to give you as accurate a result because if you are wanting to make candles and have it start right here as the fill weight and you're testing it as the first burn and it's right down here, it's going to burn hotter the lower it gets in the jar. So it's going to change the performance and the outcome of your testing process. Also, depending on how fast you are doing these tests back to back, um, if you are using a heat gun to melt down that wax to get that smooth surface and you're testing shortly after, you may not get an accurate result if you're not letting it kind of get back to room temperature or the temperature of the rest of the wax in here. And that first layer is still a little warm. It's going to burn a lot quicker and you may get inaccurate results that way as well. Another reason why I'm not a huge fan of wickless testing is if you have any uh, vessels that are shorter. So this one, I mean, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference here, but even with something like this, you may also get an issue, but especially if you have a shorter vessel, is if you are just placing the wick in there and lighting it, once it starts to heat up and you know get that full melt going, the wick doesn't have that stable structure at the bottom. So I've had it happen so many times where I'm doing wickless testing and I can't even get an accurate result because the wick starts floating off to the side and then only one part of it is burning. And then I just, I don't get that accurate, you know, start to finish. What is it actually going to burn like when the customer receives it? And I think that's the whole thinking is that I get, with wickless testing, you are going to save money on material costs because you are going to be making a smaller batch of candles and then just being able to change out the wicks. 
Um, but for me personally, I just, I've kind of come to the conclusion where I'm okay with spending that extra money if I can see from start to finish how the candle is going to burn. And again, there's been a lot of times in the past where a candle has surprised me and it actually ended up being a pretty good burn when otherwise after that first burn, if I were to make a split decision and be like, okay, that's a fail, move on to the next one without giving it a fair shot to really burn through the next two, three, four, five, whatever burn sessions all the way through to see how it is. Um, that is definitely something, again, that I think is kind of a downfall when it comes to the wick list testing and why I no longer do it anymore um, is just because if you have kind of a floating wick and again, the more it, the more it burns down, the less uh, stable the wick is going to be without actually being attached to the bottom. So those are the reasons why I personally don't like to do wickless testing and it's nothing against anybody who does prefer to do it that way or who gets good results or if you're somebody who's like, yeah, but I'll kind of get an idea of the wicks that I should be testing further. I get that part of it where let's say you are trying out different wick series within one jar and then from there you're going to make additional candles and do further testing from start to finish. I understand that doing it that way, but if you're just going based on wickless testing um, and then kind of using that as your sole method of testing, I don't think it's the most accurate way to do it. Um, I definitely like to make it from start to finish exactly how it's going to be when I sell it. Um, and I just feel like I get the most accurate scientific experiment by doing it that way. But anyways, that is all I wanted to talk about in today's video and just kind of give my little two cents on this topic of wickless testing. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, whether you agree with me or not. I feel like this is something that everybody is free to have their own opinions on. And I really don't think there's a right or wrong. This is just my personal opinion on the matter. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.